stuck in long-term contracts and accompanied by his unwavering hunger to become a dramatic actor. Elvis spent time in Hollywood building his acting career. During these movie years, Elvis and his Memphis Mafia took long road trips to film sets all over the United States. Oh man, they were wonderful years. They, they were the best. The movie years were the best years that I spent with him. They were not only the first years I spent with him, but they just far outweigh the, the touring. You know, it wouldn't have bothered me if he had never toured again. I mean, if he had just kept, but he wanted to make other movies and he should have. He should have had more drama because you see King Creole and Jailhouse Rock, you know he can carry a drama. He can carry a role. Get up. Get up. Oh, get out of there, baby. Get out. 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 When we were out in Hollywood making the movies, even though the security thing wasn't as far as his life threatening, but people want to hit him or do something, I always looked out for him. I always watched his back. I always observed people around him, trying to see if I found someone who was going to sneak up there and try to sucker punch him. So I, that was just natural to do. I was there in case it did, and I was always right close to him, so I would be between them and take him out. And the contracts were signed like four yeah, years in advance. Pictures. So I had thought, that uh, they would try to get a new property for me or give me a chance to show some kind of acting ability or do a very interesting story. But it did not change. It did not change. And so I, I became very discouraged. They couldn't have paid me you no know, amount of money in the world to make me feel any you know, self-satisfaction inside. He talked about them as being travel logs starring Elvis Presley. He said, I go somewhere and I get in a fight and I sing to women and I sing to the guy after I hit him and he would make little jokes about it. He says, travel log, Hawaii, Mexico, you know, everywhere he went. But you still did them. You must support yourself. I had to, I had to. What kind of film would you have liked to have uh, had your choice? That's hard to say. I, uh... I would like to have something that was more challenging instead of Hollywood's image of what they thought I was. Elvis would have, in any role, would have adapted to it and been able to perform fantastic. When I went to work for him in 64, he had been back from the Army four years. He did a two or three, you know, good movies when he came back. But the movies were getting weaker and weaker, and the soundtracks were getting, in some cases, more ridiculous and more ridiculous. And he didn't want to record too many movie songs. And he was promised when he did a movie song, especially a situation scene, that they would never be released on records. It was another uh, lie to Elvis. You know, when he did uh, Oh, McDonald Had a Form, that was never to come out. <laughs> All the business um, uh, guarantees that were given Elvis were all broken, okay, which um, eventually broke Elvis. Elvis's meteoric ascent to fame continued throughout the 60s. Naturally, the Memphis Mafia shouldered many burdens of the rising superstar. There was no such thing as a job. I helped take care of the cars. I helped do the driving. I did errands for him. Uh, we just did everything. The security evolved over a period of time because of how he became more 
out there. Remember, he, I think the back in the 19th The job stayed very fluid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And during the 60s, he didn't, you I know, think, he wasn't uh, out in the public that much. He was making yeah. movies, guys. So he, yeah. they had security. We lived, at, we lived in at cars, the studio. house, and studio. They had That's security on the sound stage. So, I mean, it was just, there wasn't any security. There weren't pictures taken. There's not a lot of pictures of candid shots of Elvis during the 60s, during the movie years. A lot of promotional pictures, but not fans, because he wasn't available. He wasn't there to be seen. That was a problem. You see, I was tired of doing all the damn work, and you guys just sitting there. I'm, I knew you were upset about that, it, but I wasn't going to do a thing right, about Marty, it. It's, <laughs> it's showing how Marty did <laughs> No, but I think uh, we, uh, we all, had certain Service jobs we, we we did, but I think basically <laughs> when we he got around him so much, yeah. when he wanted something, we just knew it. You Whoever know, was saying. got to that yeah. point. In the, in the movie years, the drugs were in control. The sleeping pills and the the uppers. And he said, I want to be sure, you know, we stay up all night, we, we drive all night. I know you're not used to it, and I want you to, you know, keep up as far as your attitude is concerned. So he said, I want to show you something. So out of his pocket came a little blue velvet case, a jewelry box. He said, open it up. <laughs> well, I opened it up, and it was just chock full of pills of every color you can think of. And I said, good God, what is this? And he said, here, let me give you a few, and this will help you stay awake and, and be in a good mood. I said, okay. So he picked out about four of them, and he said, here, don't take them all at once. Just take them every couple of hours. I stayed up for three days. And to be quite honest with you, you know, it gives you one hell of a good feeling. So I kept taking them. I took them for 15 years. When you start taking the uppers, which is what they were, in order to go to sleep, you need to start taking sleeping pills. So it gets to be a vicious circle. And where today one will work, tomorrow you need two, and the next day you need three, and then the next day you need four. And after 15 years, it gets pretty vicious. I couldn't take them every day. Not to be the goody goody, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't take that pill because I knew it was going to do to me. Make my mouth dry. It was just going to make me wired all day, and I just didn't want to do it. But I had to take him sometimes because he would stay up at three o'clock morning, two thirty, three o'clock, and we get up at five to go on location. It could be boring, uh, really. Be and most people who are involved in movies will tell you about sitting on the set all day doing nothing, waiting. I learned from the very start, I sleep when he sleeps. We used to have a thing, in fact, on Paramount, on GI Blues, they had a, a club scene in there, and he had kept us up late, and I just couldn't stay awake, and I hadn't taken anything. So I went over to a dead set and got into a booth there in the nightclub set, and they were shooting on another one, and laid down on the booth to get some sleep. And one of the crew guys up on the catwalk just pointed me out to Elvis. I found out later, he pointed me out. He said, like that. And Elvis came around when he got through with his business owners. He came around and would look for me. And he saw me through there, because I had there a couple of tables stacked up, and I kind of put a little camouflage so that I couldn't be seen easy. Oh, man, Boom! he threw that table and chair, and I woke up straight up, he said, Damn you, Sonny, I told you, you sleep when I sleep. I said, I'm, I'm up, boss. I just took a break, just took a break. <laughs>